Hi, welcome back to another song story from uh, Ballads A Tinker's Dozen, the video book. Um, today we're going to read the entire second uh, story behind the entire second song. I would post the song for you, except that I'm still learning it. It's a, it's a, basically an Irish reel, and it's it's difficult for me, but I'll get it up as soon as I can so that you can enjoy the song as well as the story. But I'll read you the lyrics to the uh, song after I finish the story, which is, won't take long. It's just a short little thing. It's called Say Little or Much. In a song, a pretty girl is often like a sweet melody that a man can't get out of his head. In a story, a pretty girl is just as often like a symphony in which a man can lose himself. Once upon a beautiful, sunny, windy day, three farmers told their three beautiful daughters to go out, find their cows on the common, and get the milking done. Each one of the three girls took the path from her home to the green, grassy common, and as the girls walked, the wind blew each of them to and fro and played with their petticoats with an idle teasing. The first daughter was named Patience, and she was as blonde as the wheat just before harvest, her eyes were as brown as the earth upon which she walked, and she wore a blue dress that was the color of the sky, and pure white petticoats as fluffy as clouds. She was tall, thin, and like her name, she never complained about having to walk over the fields and pathways, following the cows until they were ready, and then slowly and carefully squeezing them until they gave up their creamy milk. Patience left her family's little thatched roof cottage and walked down the dusty road to the common fields. It never took her long to find her family's cow, Perseverance. The cow was easily found. For many years ago, when Patience had been just a skinny, knock-kneed little girl, she had learned how to weave the flowers of the meadow into a garland that she gave to the lovely golden-white Guernsey cow, who gave the royally golden milk. This season, Patience had woven a necklace of white daisies with glorious little yellow centers for her favorite cow. The cow knew the girl and her gifts by sight. As Patience walked across the green grass of the common field to her cow, she met a young man. The young man was as handsome as Patience was lovely, and as pretty girls do, she smiled at him and asked if he had any skill to catch her a small bird or two. He said, come with me to that yon break of bushes and I will help you catch a small bird. Soon was heard from the small grove of trees a giggle, a gasp, and then a sigh. Patience walked alone out of the tree, saying, The bird it was tapping on the ground, but before it could be caught, it flew away. The young man followed her, pleading, Perhaps the little bird can still be caught if we handle it with care. But Patience walked away, back to finish her milking, eyes downcast that her wish had not been fulfilled. The second maid was named Prudence, and like the virtue after which she was named, she was careful, cautious, wise in her judgment, and discreet in what she often truly foresaw. Her hair was as brown as chestnuts, her eyes were as blue as a summer sky, and she wore a bright purple dress with glorious green petticoats. She was small in stature, but full and round in hips and breasts. She walked to her family's part of the common to find her cow. Prudence's cow was named Temperance, but contrary to her name, she gave prodigious amounts of milk. Temperance was a black and white splotched Holstein, as the most popular of breeds, just as Prudence was the most popular of the three maids. Prudence had made herself a garland out of fragrant pine boughs, which she wore in her hair. As Prudence sat down to, to do the milking, she was all care, always caring and judicious with temperance, a young man approached her. The young man was as handsome as Prudence was comely. Prudence smiled at the young man and asked if he had any skill to catch her a small bird or two. He said, come with me to that copse of trees, and I will gladly show you my talent. Soon was heard from the small grove of trees a giggle and then a shriek. Prudence's voice was clearly heard to say, the bird, it was tapping on the ground, but before it could reach my little white knee, it flew away. Then the voice of the young man was heard to reply, let us try again. Perhaps the little bird can still be caught if we handle it with care. The prudence walked alone from out of the trees, eyes downcast that the little bird had not been caught. She sat, sadly, again on her stool and finished her chore with her mind far away on another matter. The third, name was, third maid was named Joy, and her hair was as black as the darkest night. Her eyes were as gray as a winter's dawn, and she wore a cheerful red dress with gray petticoats that were memories of her eyes. In height, she was the middle of the three, and in her body as well. 
and like her name, she was the cause of her parents' bliss. Joy almost always smiled, taking keen pleasure in everything around her, and was the source of contentment to all who knew her. As she walked to find her cow to milk, she eagerly embraced the good and satisfying pleasures of the moment, whether they were the soft lowing of the cattle, the clearness of the, of the azure sky above her, or the expectation of the unexpected that she knew would find her. Joy's cow was named Delight, a brown Swiss, a gentle creature with hide as gray as Joy's eyes. Joy wore a garland in her hair, woven from the leaves and flowers of a sweet pea vine, which she would give to Delight to save her. As Joy walked across the common to find Delight, she carried over her shoulders a yoke which balanced two pails. Sometimes Delight gave little, and at other times much more. After the milking, and as Joy walked toward her home, she met a handsome young man who wore a happy smile on his face and a jubilant gleam in his eye. She smiled at him and asked him if he had any skill to catch her a small bird or two. He said, come away with me to yon flowering tree and I will help you catch a small bird. Joy set down her burden and took the young man's hand, leading him to the blooming wood. Soon was heard from the grove of trees a giggle, and then a laugh, and then a young maid's voice was heard to say, That sweet little bird tapped at the bush, and it did fly in just a little above my knee. It's a very pretty bird, tapping away at its ground. And then the grove and the comet itself was quiet for a while. And at about that time, two herdsmen were walking past the commons. They heard the soft sounds in the trees, and one said to the other, Let us find the pub and drink to the health of the bird in the bush. We'll drink up the sun and drink down the moon. And of all of this, some of the neighbors said little, and others said much more. The name of the song is called A Bird in the Bush. Three maidens did a milking go. And the wind it blew high and the wind it blew low. It tossed their petticoats to and fro. They met it with a young man they know, and they've asked of him if he had any skill to catch them a small bird or two. Oh yes, I've a very good skill. And it's come away with me to yonder flowering tree, and I'll catch you a small bird or two. So it's off to the green woods, went they, and he's tapped at the bush and the bird it did fly in just a little above her white knee. And her sparkling eyes, they did turn around and just as if she was in a swound. And she cried, oh, I have a bird and a very pretty bird. He's a pecking away at his own ground. Here's a health to that bird in the bush. And we'll drink up the sun and we'll drink down the moon. Let the neighbors say little or much. 